Hafidi, Mogisin, and Ali. Welcome to the One Micronesia Podcast. Another week, another episode. And for this one, I am so, I'm so happy because, ah, uh, wow. It's, I think the last time I saw you was 2004, your graduation. Yes. And that was it. And here we are in 2022. You're passing through to go back to uh, the homeland of Palau. And I was like, I was just so happy to see that you posted that you met with some <laughs> of the savior rights. I'm like, wait, she met with them, but not me? <laughs> So uh, I was so happy that you know you made time for me to jump on the podcast and really to talk about it, you know, chit chat about you know what you know what you've been you know, your life and talk about the different amazing things that you've that you've seen and, and gone through. I think that's I think that's what the podcast is all about is really telling you know the the audience that you know and featuring many different amazing uh, Micronesians who are doing amazing things like you are doing. So, ladies and gentlemen, on the podcast with me today is the chief of staff of the uh, president of the Republic of Palau, uh, Landy Kataro. Landy, thank you so much and welcome. Thank you. Um, what do I call you, Mr. Falan? Do I call you, you or call do you have like a, a show name? Um, so I go with, I, I go by Victorious, but you can call me whatever you call me at Back at Savior. <laughs> <laughs> so we won't go there. <laughs> so she is, I mean, and Lundy is a, it's been, she's been a really good friend over the years, but especially she was my senior and I have to acknowledge that. If you've went, if you've gone to attend the Savior, you always have to acknowledge your seniors because there are pretty much our elders at, at Savior. They were the ones who uh, took care of us and, 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 and taught us the, the ways of savior because you know when you're new at a school you just like you know but yeah. good thing that I love that tradition at, at you know at Mabuchi where we we have the the, the older um, the seniors take care of the, the freshmen and and the, and show them the, the ropes and stuff so uh, yeah so Landy is my senior and she's here and I wanted to get her on to talk about um, what she, what happened you know after savior and it kind of let the people know and kind of uh, take her pretty much take you on a ride and then on her journey and stuff like that. So we'll start there. So Lundy, Saber High School was, was it a, to me it was a great experience and, and of course I'm pretty sure, you know, for you as well. So, uh, so talk a little bit about maybe at the last part of Savior and then after Savior. Well, first of all, uh, Victorious, congratulations. Uh -huh. I was sitting here watching you set up. I'm very impressed. Uh, um, I think you've done very well, not only for yourself, but also giving an opportunity for Micronesians uh, um, to use this platform as a way to show who we are as a people, show our islands, uh, but also share the good things, like you said, that is being done in the islands. I think we don't praise each other enough. Uh, and so this is one of those um, areas where we can really commend people for the good work that they do. And sometimes on hard days, these are the motivations and encouragements that we need. Um, <clears throat> so yes, I think you really set yourself um, really well. I think that relationship between a freshman and a senior at Xavier really helps um, build us mm -hmm. um, to be responsible. Um, we like to call ourselves navigators. Mm -hmm. And I think as a senior, we that's the ultimate goal how do we help the freshmen navigate their way um, not so much just following in the footsteps of the ones that came before them but being able to find their own path and i think um, we talked earlier today about how you came about to where you're at today and i think that's part of finding your own way um, with the skills uh, with most especially the values and the morals that really set us um, as who we are the foundations of who we are as people moving forward um, after savior so it's been 18 years so has it, I did the, it really has I stopped it's, counting I, I know I, counting after I, I, I felt bad after counting yesterday after meeting with the other state rights that you saw but it has been 18 years uh, and I mean just to make it real like what 18 years looks like I was like if I had a child then that child would have graduated from high school mm -hmm. and is entering college but that's how long it's been but it also feels like not a day has passed. Mm -hmm. um, and I think those are some of like the relationships. That's when you know that the connection is deep, right? Mm -hmm. um, because it doesn't matter the years, the days, the months that have passed. Uh, we're able to still connect uh, mm -hmm. at the basic human level, despite positions, despite authority, despite whatever successes that society has labeled for us. So after Savior, um, I was fortunate enough to be able to go home and spend some time at home. I thought that was very important. I didn't think it was at the time um, because I was like, I'm graduating valedictorian of my class and I'm going to Palau Community College. Uh, what are people going to be thinking? And those were my honest thoughts. 
But from my parents' perspective, especially my father, um, he felt it really important that I go home. First of all, learn about my culture because I've spent four years uh, being in Chuk. Um, and being Palawan, you do get disconnected. And I think that's something that we also have to admit. And so he felt it important that I go home, even if for only a brief period, but to sort of get back in touch with my people, my culture. But most importantly, um, one thing that he always said was, you're going to school not only for yourself, you're going to go and get an education. Because the most important thing, and I think this was really kind of refined as we went to Xavier, is that we're doing these things not only for ourselves, but for others. So, um, and my father's definition of that was come home, figure out like what Palau needs. So when you go back, when you go back to school and return, you are actually contributing to the gaps and opportunities that Palau has to offer and you actually can have a hand um, in nation building. Um, but it's only meaningful for us if there's a deeper reason and not just like making that money or something, but really having that deeper reason of why you want to be doing what you're doing for others and for your country. Wow. That's, that's powerful. That's very inspi powerful, inspiring at the same time what your dad said. And he's right. I mean, yes, we, 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 when you graduate, we, like Savior is, you know, prepares you to just right out of the board, right out of the door with your diploma, you're straight onto one of the best colleges that, you know, that the U.S. has to offer because they prepare us for that. You know, they, yeah. get, they get us ready for that. But it's really awesome to see to, you, took, you took the other route where you went back home spent time, realized, and kind of got back with your culture. And then at the same time, uh, like you said, like, look, look around and see what needs to be fixed. Mm -hmm. Because I, he's right. I mean, you t we talk about the, uh, the conversation about the younger generation taking over the younger generation, this and that. And that's exactly what he did. And I, that is so cool. I, I guess I've actually never heard, you know, a parent really say that because it's usually right when you graduate, okay, you know, come back for like two weeks. Yes, say hi to the family. Do go through all the, the graduation parties, and then after the two weeks, we want you out. We want you to graduate, and this and that. But I, I guess we really forget that part where we want to bring them back because after, because if we push the kids to go after high school, this and that, and then by the time they graduate, they're like, well, I don't know what to do when I go back home. You know, I, I might as well just stay here in the states and 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 you know, uh, pursue my career and it has high pay, like it pays, pays well, stuff like that. So I think I loved, the, I loved what your, your dad told you and, and to really come back and, and, and get to see what needs, what needs work. And. and I think that's a really important point. I think the other thing that also was a really good benefit of going back home was just building my own relationships with my parents. You know, like high school years, are the years where you're, you think you know who you are and you're trying to become an adult. And, yeah. <laughs> and if you're not actively pursuing that connection with your parents and building that relationship, sometimes you drift apart. And so you're just connected because they're your parents, but you don't have that really, really deep uh, personal relationship with them. Um, and I think everything happens for a reason, right? And so I think that time was important for me to rebuild. Like I was close to my parents even before that. But I think that gave us an opportunity for them to see me for who I was then because they always only saw me like during the summer breaks mm -hmm. and I was still their baby. <laughs> and so after high school and being able to be with them, I think it also helps them transition. Mm -hmm. And I think that's the other part that I'm not a parent, but I think that's the other part that we sometimes fail to understand that we need to also be understanding of our parents because they to have to evolve and have to accept the changes that are happening in their children's lives. So, and I think that really gave us an opportunity to do that. But yeah, so I was lucky that I had that opportunity. And yes, at a certain point, my parents were like, okay, now you need to go. <laughs> I think you think are staying out way too late at night. <laughs> You're giving us more headaches than, than we need. So now you need to go. So I was able to um, leave home and go to the University of Utah in Salt Lake City. Finished my bachelor's uh, there um, in, in international relations. And then it was around, yeah. So it was at the height of the war in Iraq, the uh, Operation Iraqi Freedom. And so my focus was on terrorism and security. Um, and it's really interesting how that backdrop of education has sort of 
prepared me, I guess, for um, the challenges that we're facing um, living in a very interconnected world. Um, following graduation, again, my parents were like, well, you've been in the States for five years mm -hmm. without visiting home, you need to come home. In the timeline that we agreed on, it was like a negotiation. I was like, well, I should go to grad school. And they're like, yeah, but you need to come home. I'm like, but if I just like, go through and finish it now, it'll be a lot faster mm -hmm. and then I'll be home. And again, my parents were very level-headed and they were like, but you need to come home. Mm -hmm. Like you need to make sure that your education and what you're trying to pursue is still relevant uh, um, and be practical. So I went home and had an opportunity to stay and work for a year, mm -hmm. which made a huge difference, I think. Um, we didn't have the technological advances at the time to be able to be as informed and as in touch as we do today. Mm -hmm. And so that time at home was um, important. And then I went to Taiwan, Republic of China, Taiwan for uh, graduate school, got wow. my master's there. Wow, that's amazing. And you talk about, you know, after savior like i said it's a, the that time frame it's, it's a long time and you've, you've definitely gone through uh, and, and experienced a lot at the same time coming back home to to, to kind of uh do a little r and r but at the same time kind of reconnect and then uh, and then back to um to, to finish off like you said you went to taiwan to get your 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 masters that's amazing uh landy we're gonna take a break but when we come back we're gonna talk about uh when we come back we'll talk about your, you know what, what happened after uh, your gra uh, graduate school and and i mean like i said took you all the way to the united nations that is that was huge and right when i saw it on facebook i was like, <laughs> like i know her that's my savior you know like for all of us who knew you like your friends from savior and all around Aww. they were like we were all excited to see like like somebody that we know you know step stepping up and into a position like that and where you know so when we come back we'll talk about that because i kind of want to you know, pick your brain at it and then see how it felt because i've always wanted to you know, actually be in a united nation hall but so uh, that's so something we'll talk about next so we're gonna take a break and we'll be back you're watching the one mike Energy podcast uh we'll be right back Hafari, Mogithi, and Ali, welcome back. One Micronesia podcast, another week, another episode. Uh, so let's, we're going to continue to talk here. I'm still here with the chief of staff of the president of the Republic of Palau, uh, my good friend, my senior, uh, Landy Kataro. Uh, Landy, again, thank you so much. What a, what a very inspiring story to tell. Like, I never knew, and like, you know, what, what, to me, right when you graduated, I just, everything was just like, okay, my senior's out, they're doing their thing. And you know, so I never knew what happened after graduation for you. Now realizing, like, hearing that story, very inspiring. I loved what your dad said to go back and reconnect with the, the culture and find out what Palau needs. That's very, that's what we need. That's what that's what we should should be telling our kids to, to, so that way they know when they're out there, you know, studying and and, and trying to get a degree, they're getting something that they can bring back home, mm -hmm. and and really. Um, used to to help better our islands that's that was very inspiring so let's talk about it uh graduation your uh, graduate school that was you you finished that so what after uh talk about after taiwan after taiwan um i returned home so one of the benefits of um the scholarship programs that taiwan has to offer palauan students can't stay there wow. and so the return rate um for taiwanese or palauan scholars in taiwan is at a hundred percent um, which is not the same, obviously, and you know this. Going to school in the States uh, as freely associated states citizens, we can stay in the U.S. And so the return rate is a little more unpredictable uh, for that. So I went home immediately after graduation. Um, and if I may share uh, victorious, my last semester in grad school, uh, my dad passed away unexpectedly. Um, and I was ready to give up and be like, screw this. What am I even doing? Um, and so I had to like dig deep uh, and really search it within myself um, why I was doing this. And at the heart of it, I knew that continuing and finishing my graduate studies is ultimately what my father had wanted. Um, it was March before my, my July graduation that he passed away. Um, and so I finished school, went home and for three months, to be honest, I farmed nice. and I raised a couple of pigs Nice. <laughs> for three months after getting my master's degree until I got a phone call um, from the speaker of the Congress, who also represents my state, mm -hmm. and was like, I heard you graduated and returned home. I was like, yeah, 
It's like, what are you doing? I'm like, um, raising farming pigs. and raising pigs. <laughs> <laughs> and the comments that followed were, um, I don't think we invested in your education to come back and raise pigs. <laughs> but that's a whole separate conversation. Yeah. I truly believe in food security. Yes. Um, and it's something mm-hmm. like you need to be able to raise your own food. Um, so that really encouraged me. It was like, there's a few positions open. You should apply um, and see where you go from there. Um, so I did apply and I ended up working at the House of Delegates uh, directly with uh, the Speaker of the Congress um, and worked very closely with um, the legal councils, um, working with uh, 13 different committees of the House of Delegates. Uh, so that really was most of my adult career um, until I found an opportunity uh, and applied for a fellowship at the East West Center um, in Hawaii. So I did a leadership program there for a few months that really helped increase my regional network. I know going to Xavier, we have a very wide um, Micronesian network. Um, Going to the East West Center specifically for this Pacific Island Leaders Program really widened um, my reach and my network in the wider Pacific. And it's actually been very, very helpful um, in all the areas that I've had to work in, including the current position that I serve um, right now. Um, And then I returned back home, um, continued working, and then found another opportunity to do a fellowship at the United Nations. Uh, um, That was really focused on oceans affairs and law of the sea. It It was a very steep learning curve but it's one of those things where it really makes you realize like we all have to work together, especially for um, oceans conservation and sustainable use of our marine resources. It's not something that Palau can do alone. It's not something that Landi can do alone. It's something that we really need to understand altogether the importance, uh, knowing that there are people that depend on it a little more than others do but also really like understanding that our ocean, our resources do not know the geopolitical borders that we've set Mm -hmm. as humans. Uh, um, And so resources migrate back and forth, even pollution goes in and out of different jurisdictions. And the only way to address it is really to come together as the people of the world, uh, as Mm -hmm. citizens of the world and saying with conviction, that we need to come together to do this. And it's timely that we're talking about this. The Minister of State for Palau actually about an hour ago delivered um, Palau's statement at the UN uh, General Assembly. And part of that message was really calling on the world to say we need to come together. Um, And I think there are people that have lost hope, but I think for this week in New York, uh, with 193 countries coming together, I think that's where we re-inspire. That's where we, we look around the room and say, there's still something there that we need to work towards. Uh, um, and we can't give up. I think it's our responsibility, just like it was my responsibility to make sure that you, Victorious, as mm-hmm. a freshman, mm-hmm. do not give up. I think you just kind of bring that to a larger scale and say, it's our responsibility to be there for one another. We're not all going to have good days. Uh, we're going to have bad days. Uh, I need to be there for you on your bad day. You need to be there for me on my bad day because that's the ultimate goal that we're going for. And that's for the betterment of the world. That's for the betterment of the future generations of our countries and of the world that we live in. We will be back You're watching the One Mike Indonesia podcast. Again, we'd like to thank the, the Riga Royal uh, for having us. Uh, thank you guys so much for giving us a space to record this podcast. So uh, thank you, Riga. We'll be back. One Mike Indonesia podcast. Hafiday, Mogithin, and Aliu. My, one Mike News Podcast, we're back here. Uh, and like I said, we'd like to thank uh, the Riga Royal uh, for having us uh, shoot this episode here at their very beautiful hotel. Uh, thank you guys so much. Uh, and like I said, we're still here with, with Landi. Wow, what a very inspiring talk we've had. We talk about 2004 graduation, and then we talked about pretty much what went, what happened in between there and, and now. Let's talk about now. So you're the, wow, I, like I said, guys, we're here. <laughs> This is official. I'm here with, I can call her my good friend, my senior, 
but to the Republic of Palau, she's the chief of staff of the president of the Republic of Palau. So, Landy, let's talk about that. When you got the call, the position, it's a, it's a very big, it's, it's up there. I mean, you talk about the president, the vice president, you're, you're right there. It's actually a really interesting story, Victorious, and I think it speaks um, a lot to the character and who the president is. So, I only knew of the president. Uh, um, he was a senator. Um, when I was newly graduated um, with a bachelor's and at home. I worked at the Senate while he was a senator, but I only knew him by name and face. Um, and so after the 2020 elections, uh, um, I received the call a week after the election. Uh, and it was like, oh, the president-elect uh, is asking if he could meet you. And I was like, what? To, to, to discuss what? <laughs> it's like, oh, no, they're putting together a transition committee. Mm -hmm. Um, and wow. he's just uh, looking for different people to help. Uh, and so I met with him. Um, it was a very interesting conversation. And in fact, at the time, I was already considering like what my next step would be. And so I actually took a couple of months uh, um, where it wasn't too intense at work uh, to study for the LSAT, mm -hmm. thinking that I was going to go to law school. So I took the LSAT in October. Um, elections were in November. A week after elections, I got this call from the president-elect, uh, went and met with him. I was, my mind was blown away. I was very inspired. Um, and I, I truly believe then, and I still believe it now, that Palau, like many other countries, but most especially Palau, is at a critical juncture in its uh, nationhood development. Mm -hmm. And I, I felt it within me that I wanted to be a part of this journey. Mm -hmm. um, knowing that the person that I was going to be working very closely with had only one goal in mind, and it was to do what's right, and it was to do what was best, uh, uh, to the best of our knowledge and abilities for the people of Palau, um, which um, has been a great journey so far. Um, we worked together for the transition uh, committee he asked me to be the secretary of the transition committee. That in itself came with its challenges. Mm -hmm. um, you know how old you are, so mm -hmm. you can guess how old I am. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm already female. And despite our best efforts, mm -hmm. we still get those kinds of criticisms. Mm -hmm. It comes with the game. Um, and I think you have, to, you have to take it with a grain of salt. Uh, you have to realize that that's the reality that you're living in, but you cannot let it take you down. Um, so that actually motivated me and I had that attitude like, okay, I really have to do this, not only to prove it to myself and to them, mm -hmm. but I feel like there is a responsibility that I've taken, I'll not only do, to do what I'm being asked of, mm -hmm. but a responsibility that I have for the youth, a responsibility that I have for women especially, because if I let this take me down, mm -hmm. I have not opened up the pathway for others to follow through. And I'm only barely cutting the grass with a small machete. And I know the ones that will follow will widen the space and allow for more women and for young adults uh, mm -hmm. to be able to participate in this space and be active participants uh, in determining what their future will be. Uh, we're going to take a break, but when we come back, we're definitely going to, you know, hear uh, the, the last remark, last final comments from, from Landy and then, you know, and then a little bit more. So we'll, we'll be back. We'll take the break. Again, thank you to uh, Riga Royal for having us uh, shoot the podcast here at this beautiful hotel. Uh, we're going to take a break and we'll be right back. Hafri, Mogithin, and Ali, we're back. One Mike Kunisha podcast, the last part. This is, I really don't like this part. All good things must come to an end, right? So we're at the last part here. Um, this is where we throw, we let you, you know, open the floor up and if you have anything. But I think the first part where I want to kind of tackle is, we talked about it uh, at the, kind of before we took a break, how, how, you've, how, how you've taken a leap and, and, and hoping to inspire the next generation of leaders. Um, so talk to them. What message would you tell them? Somebody, uh, let's say, getting out of high school. You, we, we both, we both got the uh, getting out of high school, not knowing what to do. Or maybe talk to somebody who's always wanted to, to make a change but don't know how to do it. A message to the younger generation of Micronesia. A message to the younger generation of Micronesia. I think the first message would be 
Proverbs 3, 5 to 6. So. Trust in the Lord, lean not on your own understanding. My second message would be, you're going to, you're going to come across people that tell you no. You're going to. Accept that. But there's one person that will give you a chance. Be patient and wait for that. Do not give up. Um, know that your wants will change. It will change overnight. It will change 500 times. And that's okay. Dig deep. Look within yourself for what it is that motivates you. What is it that makes you wake up every day? Um, follow that. And always, always be true to yourself. Don't do things for other people. Don't do things because you're being told to do so. Find meaning, find purpose. Um, even if it's your parents that tell you to go to school, find what it means for you to be going to school. I think that's the only way that sustainability can be ensured. Mm -hmm. That's the only way that you can actually commit um, and you really take ownership um, and become the captain of all your own canoe. Inspiring. Thank you, Landy. Uh, you know, before I let you go, um, anything you wanted? Um, any last um, comment? Any last comments? Uh, well, since we're both navigators, shout out to all the Saviorites. Uh, <laughs> um, to all the listeners of this podcast, I think this is a great opportunity to highlight Micronesians. Uh, it's a great opportunity to highlight Pacific Islanders. Um, like we said earlier, spread positive vibes. Um, be there for one another. Um, and just, at the end of the day, do what makes you happy. Um, life is too short. All right, there you have it. Landy Qatar, ladies and gentlemen, uh, the Chief of Staff of the uh, President of the Republic of Palau, but also, most importantly, my senior and my good, good friend. Landy, thank you so much. All right, guys, that pretty much concludes the, this episode of the One Mike Ninja podcast. Again, we would like to thank uh, Riga Royal uh, Laguna Guam Resort for having us here to shoot the podcast here uh, at this beautiful hotel. Uh, so thank you so much to Riga, and thank you to everybody watching. And one more time, thank you, Landy. Thank you, Vic. All right, well, that pretty much concludes this one. We'll catch you guys on the next one. My name is Victorious, and I just got to say peace. <laughs>